as Paul said, I'll be talking about what the, uh, the, the relationship is between data virtualization and business intelligence agility. Uh, meaning, yeah, if we deploy data virtualization in a data warehouse environment, uh, it can make these environments a little bit more agile or flexible, uh, make it easier to change reports, change structures, that kind of stuff. Uh, that's sort of the theme yeah, of this uh, session. And now we virtualize everything, right? We virtualize servers, storage, networks, you name it. Uh, and now it's just time for virtualizing data. And uh, that's the, the topic of today. Uh, and every time when we do virtualization, what we do is we have a certain re resource, whether it's storage or whether it's data. What we try to do is sort of hide how much we have, uh, the, the technology that's been used to implement that resource, how much of it is available. And it's always sort of the same thing. So I like the term, to be honest, data virtualization. I think the reason we do this is just to improve the whole decision-making process of our organizations, or at least to support the whole decision-making process. Uh, if you talk to users, if you ask them, hey, what do you want? They never say, well, give me a database. What they want is they want to have reports, they want to have forecasting capabilities, they want to have stuff that helps them improve the whole decision-making process. Uh, what most organizations do is something like this. An architecture consisting of a whole chain of databases. Uh, and uh, these databases are connected with ETL scripts and replication scripts, and we copy and we copy and we copy. Yeah, in real life projects, if, if the user just wants to add a column somewhere, which is normally a very simple thing to do, just add a column to the report, it probably also means that the data store the report is attached to also has to be changed. And then the database that sit in front of the database probably also have to be changed. And then the ETL scripts that copies the data from one to the other also has to be changed. So sometimes it's a, just that simple adding of one column you know, involves a lot of work. Um, the world of BI is changing and the question we have to ask ourselves, does, do all those forms of BI really fit with that classic architecture? And, and well, the more you think about it, the answer is probably, well, Maybe not. So maybe we do have to change. The business people are saying we want to make, make decisions more and more quickly. We want to react more quickly. Uh, but what we're seeing is that it's not going the right way. We're taking more and more time yeah, to build systems, to build new reports. 30% uh, you know, of them indicated that they needed at least three months or more. Users come in and say we need a new report. And then our question is always, well, uh, when do you want it? And, and their, their answer nowadays is, well, tomorrow. So the question is, what can data virtualization do? Can it really make it more uh, agile, more flexible? Uh, yeah, with data virtualization, what we're doing is we're decoupling all the reports, all the uh, analytical applications. We're decoupling them yeah, from the storage structures. Uh, Technically, yeah, what that could mean in a BI environment is that if my business objects or my Cognos tool yeah, fires off a SQL statement, he's not going to fire that off to a database server, he's firing it off yeah, to a data virtualization server. And then the data virtualization server is going to look at the query, is going to say, well, so he's asking for this type of data, that type of data. Oh, oh, that's stored in different data stores. So let's break yeah, the query in multiple queries. You know, let's send those queries to the various data stores, whatever they are. Then eventually those data stores will start to send data back. And then the data virtualization server will merge it together. And then one result comes out. So to the report, it looks as if it's just a database server. But you have this sort of decoupling yeah, of the two worlds. Uh, I would say there are sort of three sort of dominant characteristics of this, uh, this sort of architecture. One is decoupling, which I already mentioned. Uh, decoupling means that I'm hiding to the reports where the data is physically stored. But the good thing is, if I'm able to do that, if I'm able to sort of redirect the query yeah, from its own database, its personal data store to a data warehouse, what that means is that I can just throw away that personal data store. Uh, I don't need it anymore. And if I don't have that database, of course, it also means I can get rid of all the ETL stuff that I use every week or every day to fill yeah, that personal data store. The effect, of course, is that you're simplifying your storage structure, and a more simpler storage structure means it's more agile, it's more flexible. Because if I now want to change something in the report, if I have to add a column, it probably involves a couple of changes in the data virtualization layer, and maybe one or two changes in the data warehouse. But that's, that's easy, so the whole architecture becomes simpler. Uh, uh, well, if we bring in a data virtualization server in the middle, I can have that specification there just once, uh, and then I 
I don't need them anymore in my business objects tools nor in my SaaS tools. All the tools will use that one specification. So if I change it, if I suddenly change the definition of northern region, I change it in one spot, that's it. And then it applies to all the tools yeah, that use that specification. Uh, and really, a couple of weeks ago, I did a session on data virtualization for a whole data governance crowd. And, and to be honest, they love this. Like, finally, yeah, we have the tool that we want. So one place where we have all those specifications. When you ask for the data, then it's transformed, it's cleansed, it's integrated, uh, it's a whole on-demand concept. Which of course works very well if users are asking for operational BI. There are reports where they want to see yeah, the current state of the data. Um, every time when you sort of copy data, it sort of slows down the whole process uh, and it hurts operational BI. So there are a lot of the, the advantages coming from those characteristics, eh? shared metadata specification, decoupling, and fresh data. I won't go through all of them. I think we've touched on most of them. Uh, you know, for example, if I take business objects, uh, if I take the universe concept, I can, I can do data integration there. But every specification that I enter in the universe, I can only use that within business objects. That's it. So it's closed off. Uh, while here, you know, if you talk about the composite product, for example, that's open data virtualization. I can bring in my specifications and then plug in almost any kind of tool, any kind of programming language, and they will all share those same specifications. So nowadays, if we talk about data virtualization service, we talk about open data virtualization service, not the, the closed ones anymore. Now, what I like probably most of these products yeah, is that they allow me to build an environment such as this. Um, that had the, build, the, the basic, or the primary building block of a data virtualization server is a virtual table or a view or a logical data object, depending on the product that you use. Uh, and what I like about it is that I can stack them, I can nest them. I can do things such as, uh, let's first build a number of virtual tables that will just give me access to all the sources. And then in those definitions of those virtual tables, I'll bring in things like uh, simple cleansing, uh, transformation of data, integration of data. Uh, for example, I have customer data in Data Store 1 and I have customer data in Data Store 4. I want to bring that together. Uh, and then on level 2, I'm going to bring in, uh, let's call it the canonical model. So I'll have a very clean virtual table with a very clean structure showing all the customer data that I have. And then on top of that, I'm going to define virtual tables that are gonna show the data in a form that fits the reports that these guys are building. It's all virtual, and that is really what I like. The fact that I can nest all these virtual tables and I can bring in you know, specifications at different levels. So specifications that, are, um, that apply to almost every user, I'll put them on the more lower level, and then the ones that are specific to a report or specific to a user group, they will go to the higher levels in these virtual tables. Uh, if you look at products such as Composite, if you look at how easy it is to import tables, because that's all, always how it starts, so you have to import your physical tables. Uh, it's just a push of the button, right? You just connect to a database and you tell the, 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 uh, da uh, the uh, data virtualization server to go to a table, import it, get all specifications. Um, and then when you have the import, you know, and that's also an aspect that I like, is you can just look at the data right away. And that also makes it possible to sort of do the development together with your users in a more collaborative way because you can define a table and then you can tell, well, is this what you want? So you can look at the structure, but you can also look at the result, the data itself. Uh, users like that. Um, but if we now have to change something that is more like a common change, we only have to do it in one place and then it's done. It works for both of them. Uh, uh, and we like the whole, this whole approach just Getting different specifications at different levels uh, works very elegantly. Uh, yeah, so instead of that the query goes all the way down to the real data, yeah, the query is handled by just looking at the cache. Um, it's, a, it's a very powerful optimization technique. Imagine that the database server we are accessing is a little slow, or our query is incredibly complex, so that's why it's slow. Uh, what you could do is build a cache and then of course it will speed up the query. Uh, Data virtualization servers yeah, could help us there. Data virtualization servers yeah, allow us to get to the Hadoop-based data, the NoSQL-based data, and for example, the data that's still in your data warehouse, sort of bring that all together. And that makes it easier to sort of build reports that access both data sources. Yeah, but the virtual data models, what the only thing we have to do is design the data structures, uh, yeah, define the mappings, how do I get data from my 
data warehouse into those virtual data marts. In a way, the same things you have to do for a physical data mart, you also have to define the data structures, you have to define your ETL logic, but then the list continues. Right? We have to have a server, we have to have a database server, we have to manage that database server, we have to build the tables, we have to tune it, we have to run the ETL process, we have to manage the running of the ETL process. It's, it's a lot more work. You already have the book on the right hand side, just wait two months and there's a, I'm not going to say better book, well maybe, <laughs> no, 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 I shouldn't be saying that. Uh, and it's going to be a little bit more technical, this book. Uh, uh, but you have to get that. That's a really good book on data virtualization. But maybe I'm a, I'm a little biased. Oh, okay.